Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Event Industry Facebook Live. I am Jen Singer, the host of the Event Industry, a online community and resource for my fellow event planners. You, I bring you all the tools and tips um, that I use to produce events and lessons I've learned along the way in the 16 years that I have been managing events. I try to decode and simplify a lot of the things that can be very complicated events on their own they seem like they are pretty simplistic um, maybe from an outsider <laughs> maybe when you show up for an event but um, as a planner you know that there are many details that go into it and many decisions that are made uh, so welcome thanks for joining me um, every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time I go live and talk about a subject, and many times I talk about a subject that um, you have brought to my attention of like, hey, can you clarify this, or can you kind of speak on this a little bit more? So thank you all for the questions and the emails. You can uh, reach out to me at hello at theeventindustry.com. That's T-H-E, eventindustry.com. Um, there's plenty of tools and tips at theeventindustry.com as well, so I encourage you to head there and uh, explore maybe some templates on um, you know, how, to, how to plan an event or how to structure the timeline or what to th consider for the beverage menu is um, something we've talked about recently too. So today we are going to be talking about BOs. Uh, what is it? <laughs> I know when you get into, I've had, I've worn a lot of hats in my days and, um, and followed some career paths, but definitely um, have stuck to event planning. And with like many industries, there are all these fun acronyms that come up and you uh, are like, what are they talking about? BO or COI or RFP or ABC, LMNOP. Just kidding on that last one. <laughs> so, so, okay. What is a BO and why am I talking about it today? BO is a banquet event order. That is what it stands for. And this is something that is very common um, to use and um, absolutely, you know, pretty much mandatory for any events at hotels. Um, there's other venues that use them too, um, but they're primarily used in, uh, in hotels. I have some coffee. This has been a crazy long week. <laughs> um, Okay, so banquet event order, um, why is it important? The reason it's important, pretty simple, is that it is a basically a contract between you or your client or your company and the entity providing the services or those foods or those details. Um, and it's legally binding. And you will be signing off on these uh, BEOs before your event takes place. And everything outlined in those documents will be present at your event or hopefully be present at your event and you don't run into any trouble. But this would be something if you did run into any trouble, you're, you know, like, hey, on the BEO, it states we're gonna have you know, um, this sort of bar service or these kind of drinks or these are the um, appetizers that are going to go out or this is where we're going to do this program. It is the roadmap for everybody to follow and execute um, what you plan. So it's super important. Um, okay, so what is typically on a BEO? Great question. Pretty much all the details, the event date, uh, who the client is, who the, what the contact information is, um, the guest count information, where the event will be taking place. So if it's in a specific uh, ballroom or on a lawn or whatever specific space that they identify at their venue, that will be listed on the BEO. Um, the food and beverage details, it will list out all the menu um, elements, the quantity, um, when those elements will be served, so if it's appetizers, what types of appetizers, how many, and at what time. Um, it will talk about what, um, how everything will be set up, so if it's just cocktail reception with a few belly bars, or it's a uh, seated dinner with dining room tables of 10-inch uh, rounds, it'll list all of those elements out. Um, it will also list any audiovisual or AV um, components if you have that included. 
Um, if you don't, if you're using outside company, it will say like outside company, you know, supplying X, Y, Z, you know, maybe they're providing a podium or something like that, but it will list all of those details in the BEO as well. Um, there will be the contracts and terms and any gratuities, uh, any service fees, those will be outlined in the BEO as well as um, you will be, there's a signature line you will be signing off or having your client or your boss or whoever is um, kind of be liable signing off on these agreements before your event date and then there is typically a diagram that goes along with this um, many a times um, for large hotels they will produce a diagram for you um, or you can you can create the diagram and we went into diagrams a couple weeks ago <laughs> there's an episode we talked about diagrams using all seated or um, or social tables. So um, if you're not familiar with diagrams, I would go back and uh, listen to that episode. I've got um, some links to on the website. Um, both of those um, services are free. So yeah, just to recap, there is tons of information that are covered in these BOs from the food and beverage details, how many guests, what the service um, elements were going to be, you know, number of bars, where they'll be located. It covers all the things, so it's super important. Um, with one piece of advice I just want to offer is that with any sort of contract and as a planner you review a lot of agreements that are you know um, what is going to be provided and what the person is going to be paying and you are that go-between person and I would just you know make sure that encourage you to read them very close closely clearly and line by line and then also ask questions I was reading over a contract the other day and it was the wording was very confusing and I feel like sometimes they're meant to be confusing so you just go like oh okay I think I got the gist and like move along and I just asked them to clarify, you know, just to, like, let me understand like what you're trying to say, what is restrictive and what is not in this agreement. So don't be afraid to ask questions if it doesn't seem very clear, because a lot of times this legal jargon is, is not very clear. Um, okay. Oh, the other thing is that there is, <laughs> um, get so excited. It's one of those days. There is a sample BO that I put on the website, um, on the blog. Um, there's a blog post with all these details. So if you want to just like go check out the blog post, um, see what I'm talking about, and download the the sample and just kind of see if you haven't seen a BO before, like see what it looks like, get familiar with um, a lot of these terms that I'm talking about, and uh, and check it out. So um, yeah. Thanks so much for the question, um, who um, the person that, that shot that in. Um, one more thing I just want to mention is that we have our first webinar um, next week, um, July 16th. Uh, last week I said it was on a Wednesday, but that's actually a Tuesday. Sorry about that. So Tuesday, July 16th at 9 a.m., or we're also hosting um, an, an additional webinar on July 18th. 12 p.m. I'm going to talk about organizing your event details and how to streamline so you can avoid the overwhelm and enjoy the event planning process and all the fun things and not get super stressed. So I hope you can join us for that. Thanks uh, everyone for tuning in today and uh, hopefully I'll see you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend.